Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today I'm going to try to do a review and I'm going to try to do something that has never been done before uh, because it's kind of hard to do a review of a fragrance when there is no fragrance. So that's, that's what I'm going to try to do today. But before we get into it, let me just remind you quickly, if you haven't already but are watching my uh, channel for quite some time, please do subscribe. Or if you've just discovered me and you like what you see, do subscribe because it makes a world of a difference to me and it helps me sustain making more videos for you guys. So, thank you so much for that. Let's get to this magical, weird um, review without a perfume. So, the, the perfume at hand is Gabrielle by Chanel. So Chanel has announced, finally, after I revealed a scoop to you guys some time ago, before even Chanel announced it, uh, Chanel has announced that they are launching a new fragrance. It's been over a decade, almost two decades, that they have launched a new fragrance, not a flanker, because they are, you know, from time to time they do launch flankers, and we're not talking new fragrances within the Les Exclusives range, we're talking a new fragrance for the mass market, it's been a while. And uh, allegedly, and this is something that I've heard while talking to many different sales associates from Chanel in different department stores, boutiques, all over the place, they all do agree on one point. And I've uh, found that what they agree on is that a lot of customers have been asking for quite some time, uh, when will a new fragrance come out? When will a new perfume be launched? Not a flanker. We're bored of flankers, you know. Apparently, Chanel listened. However... Oh, yeah, this is the nasty part. Uh, what I've read in an interview on um, interview with the mm, manager or CEO or somebody who's responsible for the fragrance department and cosmetics, they have stated that Gabrielle is for a younger market, that they have also, you know, tried to revamp Chanel number no. five because it wasn't their best seller anymore since some time. So the low number five low was created to kind of you know lure in younger generations and they're very happy with the sales of low uh but and low is already extremely expensive for another toilette but what i'm not happy to hear is that uh they stated okay because we want you know more younger customers and we want to we want people to rediscover the entire range of chanel fragrances and we want to call this fragrance gabrielle to represent the time in which, you know, Coco Chanel was much younger before she became this powerful businesswoman, we're going to call this fragrance Gabrielle, and it's aimed for younger generations. But what I don't like about this is that they also say in this interview, or in this statement, uh, that this will be the most expensive perfume within the Chanel range. So the most expensive one from the mass release products until now was Coco Noir um, as an Eau de Parfum followed by Chanel No. 5 Lot as an Eau de Toilette. So Gabrielle is supposed to have an even higher price point than Coco Noir, which brings me to believe that they will be releasing it, launching it as an Eau de Parfum instead of an Eau de Toilette. I think they might begin with it being an Eau de, Eau de Parfum only, which would kind of have make sense because they released, you know, they, they just horrendously twisted over all of their uh, Les Exclusives, which were magical and which existed as Eau de Toilettes. Uh, they just uh, discontinued the Eau de Toilette concentration. And last year, uh, the first Les Exclusives Eau de Parfum fragrance was launched, which was Boy. Boy was never made as an Eau de Toilette and Boy kind of initiated this entire craziness of Chanel, you know, switching and changing and reconcentrating their Les Exclusives perfumes. Their excuse is because allegedly they say that the customers uh, have been complaining since quite a while that Euro Toilettes were not strong enough. That's not true. Uh, Euro Toilettes were much stronger before 2012. That is a fact. And then Chanel started cheaping out on us also because of the IFRA uh, uh, regulations that have changed and made things more difficult for perfume houses to create, you know, really good natural quality perfumes. But it's not just that. It's also the greed of the, of the Maison because they, Chanel wishes, in my personal opinion, uh, to equal their prices with the 
Privé lines of other brands like Louis Vuitton, like Christian Dior and Hermès. But to each his own, I say. My problem is if you're marketing a fragrance to a young generation, a younger audience especially, and you're already stating before you even launch the fragrance that it's going to be the most expensive of the mass-produced Chanel fragrances, that's just not, it's counterproductive in my personal opinion. And it, I know we're all suckers for Chanel and a lot of us are going to end up buying it anyway. I'm going to hunt it down secondhand because this year I'm on a block. I'm not buying anything new. Um... And the, the reasons to that, I can, you know, explain in the video down below, the description box down below. I've said it in many other videos. So for those of you who don't know, you could check that video out. It's called uh, Why I Quit and I Quit. Two different videos. Anyway, um, yeah, so pricing is not good. Now, if they're targeting this to a younger audience, how might this perfume actually smell? We all are hoping and praying that it's not going to smell like a sweet chuli, like a sweet patchouli, which we're so used to seeing in perfumery nowadays. You know, we got our, I mean, even Coco Noir has that patchouli. In it. it all began more or less with um, Coco Mademoiselle. And then, you know, it was a huge hit. It even oversold Chanel Number no. 5. So a lot of other fragrance houses started following that, copying that. So in over a decade or so, a lot of sweet patchoulis have come out. Coco Noir also has a bit of patchouli in there, but it's less a sweet patchouli heavy than, you know, the sweetness you would smell in um, Poison Girl or uh, Black Opium and stuff like that. So I personally um, hope it won't have that sweet patchouli note, but it might. You never know. You know how it goes with these things. Um, I am not expecting a revolution. To be honest with you guys, I, I'm not expecting something new. I'm not expecting something we've never smelled before. I think Chanel, uh, you know, they're calling this, okay, you guys wanted a new perfume, so we're going to give you a new perfume, but it's not going to be a flanker. But to me, it smells like, again, they're playing it safe because they want, you know, they want to name it a new name, but it's not going to smell totally new, like something we've never smelled before. And because it's Gabrielle and because it's kind of from, you know, her younger years, it's going to be something softer, more delicate, nothing, you know, life changing or groundbreaking like Coco was in the 80s or like Chanel No. 5 was in the 20s. Um, I guess it's going to be, of course, it's going to be floral. We're going to get, you know, the Chanel roses in there um, where I think there's going to be. I don't know, if I judge this fragrance according to how I already have perceived the Gabrielle bag series, uh, the bag series, in my opinion, was kind of, it, it has potential, but it was produced too quickly and without giving the technical side of constructing this bag enough time, really. So there's a lot of room for improvement. And I think the fragrance might be also kind of quickly kind of concocted, you know, uh, to fulfill a certain need in the market, to revamp the look and image of Chanel. And to me, when um, a marketing strategy like this is born, there's a lot of risks uh, there because a fragrance isn't born out of a need to discover something new for, from the brand or for the brand to go down, uh, you know, different new unexplored territories. Uh, if that were the case, then I'm then I would be expecting with so much enthusiasm, Gabrielle, the fragrance. But I do believe that Gabrielle, the fragrance, is not coming out of this need and desire of, of the brand to create something new and groundbreaking. I think it just comes from the desire of the brand to stay relevant on the market and to keep selling, you know, as much as possible. And that's something that really annoys me because of everything that Chanel has been doing lately with their price politics, with their quality going down the drain, with the fact that they're selling us samples of the Les Exclusives 4 milliliter that are free bottles, they're selling them to us for overpriced, like 20 euro per bottle in a box set of 15 bottles for 290 euro or $250 plus tax. So when I see all of these choices, when I see them discontinuing the other toilettes in favor of the other parfums within the Les Exclusives range, just to, you know, allegedly get more money, when I see all this, I cannot but you know, cringe at the idea of this new fragrance coming out 
in September. But let's say something about the launch of this fragrance. What is very poetic is the fact that in Paris, they will have this pre-launch on the 19th of August, 2017, which is the date of birth of Mademoiselle Chanel. So that's very beautiful. That's very symbolic. I love the symbolism. That is something very typical for Chanel, you know. Um, the rest of the world will, will receive this fragrance in September 2017, so more or less a month after its launch in Paris. Uh, so it's a September release, as was kind of August-September was also the release of Coco Noir back in 2012, I think, or 13. I think it's 2012 or 2013. But it, it was a flanker. Um... What else do we know? We know that uh, that it, it's a it's supposed to be a crowd pleaser, and that's another word I hate when I talk about perfumes. And I mean, it's not a niche fragrance, and it's not a niche brand. I mean, it's Chanel; it's at the top of the world. So I'm not expecting a niche smell. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not into niche fragrances at all. They're just too overpowering, overwhelming, and too oody, and too patchouli. And then they have these, like, all experiments. Like, this smells like a drug. This smells like weed. This smells like, you know, white Afghan or China white. Or, you know, Nazamato does Whatever. Anyway, I'm a, I want something that is for the masses. And yet groundbreaking. That's what I expect from Chanel. You know what I mean? I want this fragrance to be... A gender bender, I want it to be beyond gender. I want it to be extremely intense, but also delicate and soft. I want all those contrasts, you know. What it represents to me, I mean, what Gabrielle represents to me, is a woman that is extremely powerful, extremely strong, um, extremely angry and full of rage for all the injustice that has been perpetrated upon her her entire life, you know, her her mom died, her father abandoned her, she ended up in an orphanage with the nuns, she had nothing, no money, and then she had to make it all on her own, And uh, but before she made it on her own, you know, she was poor, she was Gabrielle, she wasn't Coco Chanel yet. And that rage and that willpower to succeed that made her go forward, you know, I want that, but at the same time, the fragility, because she came from nothing, so it's super easy to eliminate her. Back in the day, I think if you killed somebody, nobody would have really cared that much either, even, you know what I mean? Like a kid from an orphanage. So that fragility and that extreme, almost stubborn, you know, aggressive willpower, I want that contrast in this fragrance. I want to smell out that power in this fragrance. I want to smell out that desire to succeed but knowing at the same time that I come from really poor modest environments and backgrounds and that will to reinvent myself because we know you know Coco would kind of change the story about her dad all the time and about all her life she said she would be living you know that she lived with her aunts she said her father went to America to work and that he was always like sending her money that he would always come back I mean he abandoned her she knew that but she would like a mantra, you know, she would repeat it to herself to a point where she even probably at a certain point somewhere down there, down the line, convinced herself that certain things were true that weren't perhaps really true. So, but it's, it's because of that willpower of this woman to survive and to, to be loved and to constantly, you know, make it, make it to the top and struggle and, 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 and feed off of that love and desire that people uh, always showed her. It's that that made her Coco Chanel, but it's the Gabrielle that managed to plant the right seeds that would then one day grow into Coco Chanel. And I want to smell out those seeds, you know. I want that roughness. I want that crudité. I want that crude, rough, even vulgar at times, perhaps, um, beginnings, you know. I want those beginnings, especially in the opening notes of Gabrielle. And then as Gabrielle then, you know, dries down, I want just a hint of Coco Chanel. You know, I want a hint of the woman that will become uh, the master, of the woman that will become the top of the world, you know, the queen of fashion of the world. So I want it to begin rough, and I want it to end delicately hinting at the power that, that Chanel will unleash, you know, that Coco Chanel will, that Mademoiselle will unleash. So I want the softness of Gabrielle in the opening notes, in the heart 
I want, I want love, I want passion for sure. And then in the dry down, I want a hint of the beast that will be unleashed. Is that too much to ask for? <laughs> Perhaps it's too much to ask for, but uh, it's, it's my vision of, of Coco, uh, of, of Gabrielle, uh, the fragrance. And I do believe that it will come out as an eau de parfum. And then maybe if it's like really successful, you know, just like Coco Noir came out as an eau de parfum, it was successful, and then they made the pure parfum. They never made the eau de toilette. So I think Gabrielle is going to come out as an eau de parfum because it's a tendency, it's a fashion nowadays. Everybody's doing these higher concentrated bullshit things, whatever. And then maybe we're going to get a pure, con an extract, a parfum of Gabrielle as well. I'm sure we're going to have down the line also, you know, like a shower bath, a, the entire range. It all depends how shower bath the shower gel or the or the bath foam or the deodorant maybe even if it's super highly successful we might even get a deodorant and um a body lotion and a body cream all these things are possible now another note before i end so you see this is a review it's a review of my vision of this fragrance of my dream of what this fragrance is and it's fascinating um to to see how we can read you something just from memory and memory patterns of what fragrances are to us or what they represent to us. We can envision a smell without even there being a smell. And that's so magical about fragrance. Let me just finish off by saying um, I have no clue how the bottle will look like. Um, you know, the only groundbreaking bottle that they made to kind of counter the, the this kind of Chanel number no. 5 a structure medicinal bottle uh, was uh, chance chance was round so it was kind of a contrast to this uh, they've they've never done a third type of bottle and i wonder um if gabrielle will be breaking with with those uh, standards as well i have my suspicions that it might not because again i think chanel is trying to play it safe here which is a super bad move if they are so please 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 i'm begging the gods up above Chanel, prove me wrong. Prove me that you're not playing it safe. But until then, I shall have my reservations because I don't want to be unpleasantly surprised, so I will not expect anything. <laughs> and then, you know, to be at least a little bit pleasantly surprised rather than expecting the world and then receiving something that's super disappointing in the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this uh, hypothetical, magical, uh, immaterial review. And if you have, uh, please do thumb it up. Let me know what you think in the description box down below. And let me think what your dream of Gabrielle the fragrance is. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. No matter how the fragrance turns out to be, we'll still never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye.